Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. If you suffer from knee pain, you're not alone. Every year, more than 12 million people visit their doctors because of knee pain, and half of them because of damage to their cartilage. Now, cartilage is that glistening white substance on the end of the bone that acts as a cushion between the bones and allows for smooth, pain-free motion of the joint. Physicians and researchers have been trying to figure out how to grow cartilage and how to be able to repair cartilage for absolutely decades. Mayo Clinic's Department Department of Orthopedics, in conjunction with Mayo Clinic Center for Regenerative Medicine, is conducting a clinical trial that may be the next generation in being able to repair damaged knee cartilage. It would be good. Believe it. <laughs> this new approach called Reclaim completes the repair in a single surgery by using regenerative medicine techniques to recycle the patient's cartilage on the spot. And here to explain are Dr. Daniel Saris and Dr. Aaron Critch. Dr. Saris is the orthopedic surgeon. Dr. Critch is an orthopedist with a focus in sports medicine. Welcome both of you to the program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, you've got to be pretty excited about this, right? I mean, people have been trying to do this for years, and it sounds like you two may be on the cusp of actually being able to do it. Yes, I think that's right. It is exciting, and it's exciting for more than one reason. Uh, it's exciting to be able to do something new and to do something for the very first time in, in patient care. Having a patient trust you to do something that's never been done on the world for the first time together. But it's also great to be doing that as a team. So not just me and Dr. Critch, we've become great friends, and now you're able to do something new in medicine with a good friend but also with the people at the cell therapy facility, uh, at the people at the Center for Regenerative Medicine. It's a real team effort, um, and it, uh, it's fun making a difference. You have a bit of an accent. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. I come from Amsterdam, Dr. Shives. Amsterdam. <laughs> yes, born and raised in the Netherlands, and I just moved to Minnesota. Uh, you guys have a little bit of an accident, uh, sorry, accent here. Um, I moved here in February, so it's been a really interesting year, and we've accomplished quite a lot, and we've treated the first two patients already. Really? So, Dr. Critch, uh, you see this fairly commonly, uh, patients who have, have, have damage to their knee cartilage, and these are, are mostly, these are not patients, older patients with arthritis, these are younger patients who have injured their knee. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's the most typical patient that we see in the in the sports realm. Uh, the analogy I use coming from Minnesota is that uh, if you think of your knee inside of your joint like a road, if there's a single pothole on that road, you're really a good candidate for cartilage restoration surgery. If there's more potholes than road, we see sometimes here in Minnesota winters. Happens th quite often. <laughs> yes, th then that's really, that's more of arthritis we're talking about. And there may not be surgical options to repair the cartilage once it's that advanced. But in the state where there's that one pothole, we can really fill that pothole and uh, get patients back to a high level of activity. How has this cartilage damage uh, typically been treated in the past? Well, I think we can say there were two methods, maybe three methods of treatment that people will recognize. So one is called microfracture. You basically just drill holes in the bone and create a wound, and then Mother Nature has sort of a wound repair mechanism. The other one is you can... Yeah, but, but Mother Nature never actually filled that defect with cartilage, correct? No, no she filled it with fiber cartilage and sometimes okay. a piece of bone sticking Scar. out like a little volcano. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and it works for smaller defects. It works for a short period of time. But um, I think it is not the method of treatment for the patients that really need treatment of a serious defect. The great advantage of being in North America is that you have a good ac access to allografts, so a transplantation of a whole plug of cartilage and bone. Um, that's a procedure that can also be used for some of these patients. So that's a piece of cadaver bone yes. that has both the bone and the cartilage on it. Yep, and we will take that from the freezer or from a fresher storage, and then you can use that, and the results of that are quite good. So for a patient with a defect that extends deep into the bone, we feel that an allograft transplantation, the bone and cartilage plug, is a very good option. And at the moment, the only cell therapy that is available is that where you take some cartilage from the patient, you culture it for a couple of weeks or months, uh, you need a biotechnology company and you need two surgeries. And in the second surgery, you put the cultured cells from the patient themselves back into the knee. That's called cartilage transplantation surgery. MACI is the abbreviation you can see and online. And does that work? Yes, that works very well. Uh, we were fortunate enough to do an international uh, controlled trial in Europe with many locations. And that was the reason why the FDA registered it is. So that's the first registered cell therapy in America. Um, and it works well for up to 20 years, we know now, cartilage-based um, repair. 
And with these newer techniques, we know five to seven re year results are good. Uh, but now you've got an even better way to fix these defects, right? And that's the reclaim procedure. So tell us about that. Yeah, the reclaim uh, is a very exciting procedure because instead of uh, subjecting the patient to two surgeries, we can do this in one surgery. The other advantage to reclaim is we actually use uh, stem cells or medicinal signaling cells to harness the power of cartilage regeneration. So one of the downsides of Macy that uh, Dr. Saris described is that when you sell, send cells to the lab and you grow them for a prolonged period, they no longer are really resembling the normal cartilage cells. We hope that they become cartilage cells when they go back into the knee. But one of the advantages of using reclaim in a single stage is that those cells don't undergo dedifferentiation. They really maintain uh, their own personality and, and our cartilage cells when we put them back in the knee. So tell us exactly what you do in the OR. So what we do is we clean the rim of the defect it's like when you wallpaper or paint, you don't start immediately on the original wall, you clean some stuff up first, right? Uh, what we can do is we can recycle the paint or the wallpaper. So we take a small piece of cartilage from the rim of the defect, and the cells in that tissue are still cartilage cells. The tissue isn't good anymore, but the cells are still fine. So we found a way to digest and chemically mince and digest that tissue. Um, and then we get the individual chondrons, the chondrocytes with a little part of their listening apparatus around them. But those are not enough. Those cells are not enough to fill the whole defect. And that's why we mix them with these MSCs, the signaling cells, the stem cells. We need about 10% of the patient's own cartilage, 90% MSCs. We put it in fibrin glue, and you can spray paint it into the defect during one surgery. Uh, it takes about two and a half hours instead of four months. And we can do this for a tenth of the price. Unbelievable, and you've already done it on two patients. Yes, uh, we're in a um, first-in-man study, and the FDA guidance tells us that we can do one patient every six weeks. Uh, we have more patients that want to be treated and are ready to be treated, but we treat a patient, then we wait for six weeks to make sure that everything's safe, everything's well taken care of. Uh, so we're set to treat the third patient soon, and the first two are doing very well. So using the phrase recycling the patient cells actually is a pretty good turn of phrase because it's the, pa the patient's cells. You're not getting any donations anywhere. It's their cells that are doing it. Yeah, we know the cells that become the cartilage repair uh, are the patient's own cells. And Dr. Saris had done some elegant work um, in the Netherlands looking at that cartilage repair site. And even though we use the medicinal signaling cells to help regenerate the cartilage, they actually go away over time. And what's left in that regenerated tissue are the, all the patient's own cells. So what's the recovery like for this procedure? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, so from our patients now, it's too early to tell because they're only six weeks and 12 weeks, uh, weeks out. But both of them are doing fine. And it's daycare surgery. So they're only in the hospital for a few hours. Uh, they walk when they leave the hospital. Uh, and the patients that we treated in the Netherlands, they actually recovered four to six months quicker than we were used to seeing from the other technologies. And obviously it is because we are enthusiastic and because they were the first ever to be treated. But it's also because these signaling cells, the medicinal cells, don't only create growth factors, they also uh, change the intraarticular environment and therefore the knee heals up quicker. These patients had less swelling, they had less synovitis, inflamed uh, tissue in their knee joint. And that's part of those roles of those cells as well. That's quite advantageous. Uh, remarkable. But how did you have a pretty good idea that this was going to work? I mean, you must have done some studies prior to using it on humans. Yeah, so Dr. Critch traveled with the International Cartilage Repair Society as one of the international fellows a couple of years ago, and that's when we met. And we had th thought about something like this. Uh, and from those ideas came sort of a gut feeling that this was going to be right. Then we did a couple of in vitro lab experiments um, and we didn't even do any in vivo experiments because the human patient is the best one to experiment this in. And um, patients were gracious enough to understand. We explained it in the way that they trusted us, and they were part of our team. Uh, finally, what do people do that are listening that want to be part of this? Because I'm sure you said there are people who want to. Yes. The list is long, I'm sure. Yes, we have information on the trial at clinicaltrials.gov.gov. Uh, um, we have a nice uh, dedicated study coordinator, and we're certainly happy to, you know, to, to listen to patients and to screen patients to see if they'd be candidates uh, for this exciting trial. They All can right. send us an email at cartilage at mayo.edu 
or me at mayo.edu. Excellent. Me at mayo.edu. <laughs> there you go. Get your name on the list if you've got a cartilage defect of your. You, you guys are fabulous, and uh, what a remarkable advance uh, this potentially is. And all the best to both of you. Uh, we've been talking about. Uh, Cartilage Repair and Next Gen Cartilage Repair with orthopedic surgeons, Dr. Daniel Saris and Dr. Aaron Critch. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. It was wonderful.